Good morning. We're going to stroll through Date Young Women like we strolled through Dream Girl. I got so much good feedback on the stroll through Dream Girl, I'm going to do it on Date Young Women. God, what a fucking rack. Ugh. I mean, those are E+. Plus. They aren't very pretty, but God, there's plenty of them. That would be so much fun, just on general principles. Fun bags, I think they're called when they're that big. <laughs> okay, Date Young Women. I wrote it in 1987 when I was uh, 47 years old. I got divorced when I was 42. During the next five years, I learned the hard way. There's no easy way to learn this, guys. There's no easy way to learn it. You have to go out there and make mistakes like I did. I mean, I wrote my mistakes in here for you so you don't have to make my mistakes, but you've got to make your own to figure out what the fuck you're doing. There's no way to learn except by doing. Fall off the bicycle, fall off the skis. Anything you learn to do requires making mistakes to figure it out. Say 42, she has two kids, and you move down to a 40-year-old, never married, who's a bit of a feminist. You've learned a couple of things already. She's got two years younger, and she's probably better looking than the, than the woman with two kids. So you're going down the age ladder, up the beauty scale and you'll pass yourself and soon you'll be dating the kind of women you want to date. But you have to learn each age level. There's a bunch of different groupings of women. I didn't make these up. This is the way society treats women. Over 45 are just old women. 40 to 45 it's a little shaky. That's a group. 35 to 40 is a group. 30 to 35 is a group. 29 is a special group all by itself. They're all very difficult because they're worried about becoming an old maid. And you're it. You're going to be my husband. It gets very complicated quickly. 25 to 28 is another group. 18 to 24 is where we're, we're trying to get. That's what the whole book's aimed at, the 18 to 24-year-olds, the Playboy Bunny group. Carl Ann is the name I made up for Christina Marie, but she was just so much fun to be around and be with that we lasted four years. She taught me the most, the hard way. Thanks for the memories. I was sitting on Barbara Kristen's couch, that's her right there, on a nice summer day in Fullerton. I was uh, 43 and she was 24. She was in the bathroom fucking around. So I'm reading this Cosmo and I had a double spread in there, you know. And it was all little books from a book club. And they were all about, they were all aimed at women. How to get the man back how to keep the man, how to marry the right man, and so on. And when she came out, <clears throat> I said to her, look, don't you think this is kind of sexist? Look at this. All these little books for women. She wasn't a feminist, but she had sympathy with some of their positions. And so do I. Equal pay for equal work. Who the fuck can be against that? <laughs> okay, you want to be a coal miner? Put the fucking heart down and get down in there. We'll pay you the same. <laughs> anyway, she was a bit of a feminist. I said, don't you think that's sexist? And she said, well, if you're so smart, why don't you write a book on how to date young women? You seem to know how to do that. I was high and I was drinking wine. And I took out a, a business card and I wrote it on the back, date young women, put it in my pocket. And you know how when you're high, you think it's a great fucking idea. Next morning I get up, it still looked like a good idea. So we're down the library and there's a thing called books in print. It was three volumes about that big, one, two, three, of all the books still in print from, from the beginning of time. And I looked under courtship, I looked under dating, I looked under young women, old men, I looked under every possible category, nothing. So I said, oh, that's, that's a good idea. So I got home and I started writing. Five years later, five different voices, I wrote it in five different voices, voices, uh, the final voice is, I'm the, I'm the older brother, and I'm sitting there telling my younger brother how to get laid, starting at the top and going all the way to the end. So that's the voice you hear in the book now. It, it went through all sorts of drafts. The next most important person was this guy, D.J. Wilson, Donald John Wilson from Shippenville, Pennsylvania. He was two years younger than me. We grew up together with the same values, both raised by fathers from the greatest generation. So we had a good work ethic and a good brain, let's put it that way. 
So he read it and he said, hey, you know, this thing reads like a damn tick manual. I'm a tick writer, so I guess I wrote it like a tick manual. He said, you take this chapter here, understand her, and you move that up to the front. You'll have yourself a good book. So I did, that's all I changed. And it became what you see. Plenty of other people helped me. In 17th printing, I want to talk about this guy, Mikhail Lipinski. He came to the workshop on day one, five days after he bought Date Young Woman. He flew out here from, he was a uh, math professor at Yale. He had a heavy Russian accent. It was a double knit polyester suit. You know, it doesn't hold its shape at all. And it just looked like shit. So I, I took him out and I bought him a suit. I bought him two suits. And he wanted to take his old suit back. I said, no, you throw that fucking thing in the trash so you're never tempted to wear it again. <laughs> when you go suit shopping with me, you get it tailored perfectly too. We go to the tailor right down the street from the suit shop and I direct the tailoring. So he came to every workshop for maybe seven years. And about the fifth year, he said, you know, everything I've learned here is what my mother told me. Comb your hair, brush your teeth, make sure your shirt's clean and your pants are pressed and your shoes are shiny. That's right. You got to look like somebody she wants to talk to first. So here's what we're going to talk about. First thing you learn when you're, when you're trying to help somebody is tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. First thing, I'm going to tell you what works and what doesn't. Now, most men won't listen to me. They'll skip that chapter. They won't pay much attention to what I'm saying now because men have a hard time taking advice from other men. They must, they must feel like their nuts are going to shrink if another man knows something they don't. I'm 82 fucking years old. I've made every mistake in the goddamn book. Married three fucking times, divorced three fucking times. Okay, so I'm not some Superman. I'm just somebody who's paid his fucking dues and I've got it. I wrote it all down for you. It's no, no less on you that I know this and you don't. No, nothing. It has nothing to do with that. I can't even do fucking algebra. You can do it probably with your eyes closed. So what? Okay, enough ranting. What works and what doesn't? What's it about? It's about everything you need to know to date young women if you're 40 or you're inexperienced of any age. The youngest guy I had was Dan from London. The older you are, the more difficult it is to change yourself. I went to therapy when I was 32. It was relatively easy to change when you're under 30. It gets more difficult as the years go by. You get stuck in a rut. The difference between a rut and a grave, a grave has ends to it. A rut just goes forever. Doing the same fucking thing you're going to do in the grave. Nothing in it. Understand her. That's the chapter DJ told me to move up front. So there it is up front. I talk about a typical 20-year-old how she looks at the world, what her values are, when she had sex, what, she, what kind of drugs she takes, where she works, where she goes to college, and what her dreams and plans are, why she has a boyfriend, why she doesn't have a good boyfriend, and so on. Everything about 20-year-olds. Which young women? I teach you to stay away from ultra lower class, ultra upper class. Try to stay in the middle. Upper middle class is about the best. Uh, 18 to 24, you have to start older and gradually move down when you don't have any experience. You have to learn what you're doing by women who go out with you. They are on the internet because they can't get a date. And here you are offering to take them out. So you go on 20 different internet. That's a whole bunch of stuff. It's in all my videos. Go to my channel and look up top of the age ladder, bottom of the beauty scale, and you'll get it. They all have boyfriends because it's been beaten into them by society and it's evolution. They want to reproduce and they need somebody there all the time to provide and protect and young women to entertain and to be um, accepted by, by the peer group. I have a boyfriend and so does everybody else. So don't, don't whine to have a boyfriend. Just go on with it. She doesn't mind going out on him and fucking, fucking you and fucking him. It doesn't make any difference to her. So it didn't make any difference to you. But it does. A lot of men go, oh, I can't take somebody else's girl. You're not going to take somebody else's girl. You're going to fuck her for a couple of years max, and that's going to be it. 
Carla had a boyfriend. He was a six foot five linebacker for UCLA. I never met the motherfucker and I never wanted to meet him. Okay. And I never had more fun in my whole fucking life and neither did she. Okay. He can't do what I can do. I mean, I took her to Hawaii. I took her to Las Vegas, Miami, Palm Springs, Hollywood. Boys can't do that. They're not with you because they love you. They're with you because you're a good fuck. You're fun to be with. You understand her. You don't lecture. And you're a good lover. You take care of her. You make her feel important. That's why she's with you. Understand yourself. What are you, what are you doing? Go fuck a hooker. If that's all you're interested in, because young women are not interested in that. Unless you're a sugar daddy, then they're interested in fucking 40 year olds. <laughs> Get ready for her. That means getting your house ready, getting your car ready, and getting yourself ready. If you're overweight, you've got to lose weight. That's part of looking good. You've got to have the right clothes. You have to look like someone she wants to talk with and someone she wants on top of her. That means you can't be fat. Period. And you have to good clothes that fit. Brown doesn't go with anything except shit. The right attitude in very simple English is you can take it or leave it. Captain Rip Butler is the image I want you all to follow. You can take it or leave it. Women first, because if you don't know what you're doing, make your mistakes there, learn what you're doing, and move down the age ladder and up the beauty scale. This is not a mystery. This is everything I did. Okay, this works. This is this is the keys to the kingdom. Ethics. You're older and smarter than she is. Don't use her. Play fair. And for Christ's sake, don't fuck a virgin. Let her go find a boyfriend and get that taken care of. And then you can go out with her. But it's not your job to take her, put, take her cherry. Quarter. Longest chapter in the book. Everything before penetration is quarter. Seeing her across the room in the class at Rio Honda Junior College. All the way into your bedroom where you're just sticking your dick all the way in. All that is courtship. Everything that got you into that bedroom is courtship. It starts when you look at each other. It's phase two after you get inside her. Find her. You find her where she's not looking to meet young men or men. Waitresses, bartenders, hostesses, clerks in stores, anywhere where they have to talk to you is part of their job. Then if you do it right, as explained in the book, talk with her, you'll get somewhere. But if you can't talk to her, you can't do anything. Go to college classes. At break time, you'll be able to talk to some people. Key of, key of data, always make it easy to say yes. That means it's time limited. It's not far from her house. If you turn out to be a dork, she could get out of there without wasting a whole day or half a day. I suggest coffee at Starbucks. 45 minutes and you're gone. But you tell her up front, I've got an important meeting at 2.30, so I'm going to have to haul ass at 2.15. Is that okay? Okay, I'll see you there at 1. And away you go. Sex with her, basically, it's like a 40-year-old. They're no different. They just take longer to warm up. If she doesn't want to fuck you, nothing you can do about it. Period. Phase two. You're now in a relationship with her. Even if she has a boyfriend, you're a lover, not a boyfriend. If she has a boyfriend, that takes care of parties and Saturday night, all that stuff. You're for Tuesdays. And who's in charge here? The women do not want a man they can boss around. They don't want anybody they can whoop around like a pussy, like their boyfriends usually. So you've got to be a man. You've got to act like you're in charge to stay in charge. When you fall in love, which you will if you have enough sex for a long time, you will fall in love. It's chemical. And you can't make it start and you can't make it stop. Love rears its beautifully insane hit. The poets say you're crazy. I say you're crazy. And I say, bring it on. <laughs> Make me crazy. I love being in love. In the end, everything comes to an end. Either one of you dies or time, things change and she moves on or you move on. It doesn't make any difference. An end comes to everything. How to handle it. What, how to look at life after that. Disadvantage of young women. That's, <laughs> I mean, you'll see when you get there. Closing advice, that's kind of obvious. Updated helpful hints, those are just things like never wear a scarf, a winter scarf. That wasn't in the original. And the last thing I talk about is the radio show and a book called 164 Problems. If you have a problem that's not in the 164 Problems, for Christ's sake, 
I'm going to put you on the first page. Write to me and tell me what the problem is. And I'll give you an answer on how to fix it. Okay, and then you'll make it. It'll become 165 problem solved. This is everything from my radio show, email, uh, coaching, my website, questions, the radio show, three years, 200 hours. Every question you could possibly imagine is there. There's another thing free at my website called a Gantt chart. It's everything you've got to do from the time you start this program until you're fucking as many women as you can possibly handle. The guy who wrote it is a systems engineer, and he went from zero to hero in six months after he met me. In a year and a half, in two years rather, he found a woman he wanted to marry, but he had read Harry Brown's how I found freedom in an unfree world, and they got married without the law involved. And they're still married. They live in Phoenix. And he has a good life. That's what he wanted. He got what he wanted. And you will get what you want. Read the book. It's $1.99 as a Kindle. And I think it's five bucks as a paper. I would get it as a Kindle and put it on your phone. So it's always there. Whenever you think of something, look it up. Okay, let's go on down and see what's after the table of contents. Sue Carroll was a, one of my girlfriends. We lasted about a year and two months. She was an engineer, very smart. She could explain lots of things to me that tech engineers, I worked in aerospace, couldn't explain to me, but she could. And I like smart people. We had a good time. She had the best tits except for Chris on the whole fucking planet. Stand up C. So, you know, the nipples were just kind of pointing up at the sky. Uh, really nice and shiny black hair. She was... Uh, Happy Holly, that means Hollies are white people and Chinese or Asians or Hawaiians are the other half. Half a Holly, half a Holly. I don't care. I don't care. I had a black girlfriend. I had a Korean girlfriend. I had a Mexican wife. I don't give a fuck. Just don't act like ghetto trash and I'm fine. What works and what doesn't. I'm going to tell you now the color pictures are only in the Kindle version. But look at this. Look at that waistline on that girl. Lordy, mm, this is the best curve in the world, right? Oh, God, what a set of hips on this thing. Short version of what doesn't work. If you're not dating and mating, you're not going to get a date, period. That's the number one killer of everything. I can't teach you how to do a fucking thing if you're not dating and mating. So what does that mean? That means you've got to get on the internet, go out with women and go out with you, and learn how to date and mate. It's not easy because you feel humiliated, stupid, ignorant, backwards, awkward, every possible bad feeling because you don't know what you're doing. Just like anything you don't know what you're doing. You feel outclassed out of your fucking league and so on. And you have to go do it. It's the only way you're going to learn. Period. Everything I write is about evolution, biology, psychology, and there's a word missing right here. It should be right after this. It should be a word after this. And experience. Everything I learned the hard way. There's no easy way is in this book for you to learn from. This is the key to the whole thing. Everything you know. Let it happen. Don't make it happen. You can't make a woman do anything. They choose the man they want to fuck, and that's it. NLP and that kind of horseshit doesn't work. Courtship is 3.8 billion years old when life first appeared on the planet. And it was nonverbal all the way up until 40,000 years ago. <laughs> 40,000 years ago, we learned to speak. But everything all the way back to 3.8 billion, did I say billion? 3.8 billion years ago. All the courtship and running through our veins and her veins is there from every ancestor, every animal ancestor we have, all the way back to the beginning. It's a system, okay? Some guy coming along in uh, 19, whatever, 70, Dreamed up this bullshit. Might be good for selling cars or insurance, but sure as the fuck doesn't work on women. Oh, they'll tell you it does because they never had a girlfriend. None of them. What is courtship? Everything before penetration. Courtship is lots of things. Number one, it's nonverbal. It's subtle. It's demonstrating good intentions. It's signaling. It's calming her fears. Courtship is attraction, stimulation, fascination, exhilaration, inspiration, titillation, but most of all, courtship is persuasion. You're the seller and she's the buyer. 
Got that? You're persuading her. How do you persuade her? Be a man. Be the best man you can be. Be better than Jimmy. Be better than any guy she's ever met. And she'll choose you. That means be your best self. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Won't work. They spot liars instantly. A lot of guys don't believe this. But you're an animal. You're no different than dogs and bears and iguanas. You're run by a program in your head. You're a stimulus response machine. You're pain and pleasure. If it hurts, you stop doing it, most of you. If it feels good, you keep doing it, most of you, including me. I didn't stop and hurt bad. Marriage one, I have two years, wasted two years. Marriage two, I wasted four years. Marriage three, I wasted seven years. Horrible. It's a waste of her life and your life. If it's over, it's over. Move on. That's the one thing I learned of all this. What does she want? What she wants is what all women want since the beginning of time. They want a man, a human, who can provide, protect, and impregnate her in that order. In that order. First, you got to be able to provide. Then you got to be able to protect. And then you got to be able to get it up and take it home. Shocking psychological fact. If you're not dating, someone brainwashed you for some reason. Or you learn from a crazy mother and a crazy sister that women are crazy, manipulative, painful, humiliating creatures, and you don't have anything to do with them. Or you were told to be passive. Don't push yourself on her. You have to push yourself on her. You have to walk over and say hello. She's going to test you. She's going to see if you'll run away. Don't run away. Stay there and take it. So people brainwash you to be a nice guy, basically. And you got to get rid of that or you're never going to get anywhere. Second shocking fact, it's all up to you. Well, you got the book. You've got me. If you get on the newsletter, you can. If you don't assert yourself and get after her, you're never going to get a kiss, let alone a girlfriend. Why? Because Mother Nature designed us. She programmed males to compete for females, and she programmed females to pick the winner. <laughs>